Jacob Brandon put a little Monday Tuesday parlay. Chiefs to win by at least five and a half, and the Dodgers to also win tonight. At my, they were minus 170. You put those together, pays about two and a half to one. Let's go, Clayton. Come on, man. Hey, you owe me a lot of money, Clayton. Years, Kershaw, you make 37 million a year. <laughs> 37? Say it again. Yeah, 37. That's good. He's they gonna earn it get tonight, over the baby. Hulk, Nick. Yeah. 32 they do. years. I agree. It's been 32 I agree. years. They finally get over the hump. Let's go. I've been yeah, betting on a good most tonight. of all this. Jenna, you know Rays this more than Dodgers any of five. us. Oh, man. Uh, all right, let's talk some New England Patriots. Good. Cam Newton has said over and over to anyone who would listen, the answers to the Patriots' offensive problems are in the building. Well, clearly he didn't specify which building as the Patriots' offense looked bad on Sunday. Cam threw two picks. New England didn't get into the end zone until the middle of the fourth quarter in a loss to Denver. So is it time to panic in New England? Cam still doesn't think so. Take a listen. There's no need to press the panic button. There's no need to, you know, start re reinventing the wheel. We have the answers, and I said again, we have the answers in that locker room. I, I, I heard a person say once, you know, I don't point fingers. You know, I point thumbs. And with that being said, I take full responsibility of where we are as offense and, and, and knowing here moving forward that I will, it starts with number one, and I will be better. Right. You know, the sky may be falling for the next couple of days. And, and listen, I, I bring my umbrella, my raincoat, and everything else that I need, you know, to, to, to get the job done. Mm -hmm. And I know, you know, we will get the job done. And here moving forward, uh, we will have more production here in, in a positive way. All right. Yeah. As someone who lives He's with so a funny. Patriots fan, in Belichick we trust. So, Brandon, I will ask you on a scale of 1 to 10, how panicked should Patriots fans be at this point? I love this energy from Cam. This is a 1 on the scale. This is absolutely oh. a 1. Look, this guy was signed late. He had no preseason, no offseason, and a new organization, a new system. He barely played last year. He barely practiced this week. In the last two games, they would have won if it wasn't for COVID-19 finally affecting the win-loss column. So for that reason, it's a one, Nick. So I thought I was going to go low on the panic meter and call it a three. But one's even lower than that, obviously. The, the Patriots... Because of their Obviously. schedule to close the season, they just need to tread water through the first eight, nine weeks of the year. Then they get the Texans, they get the Chargers, they get the entire AFC East at the end of the year. And as we are now, though, America is realizing what I've been saying all year long, the Bills are not that good. So 10 wins no. will win this division. So I, I don't think they should panic yeah. at all, but Wilds, I'm going to throw a little curveball yeah. at you because I'm going to tell you something time? that I that I've I saved until this very moment because yesterday while Brandon and I were yelling at each other about Case Keenum's <laughs> credentials I got a text message from what I will call a trusted NFL source and the text message Baker? said the Odell the Odell trade rumblings are rumbling again and I look around the league oh, yeah. and I 100%. say, and, and I say, who is a team that if he were to become available, Let's could fit him in under the cap, Let's go. would make sense, has an obvious need there, and the top of that list is your Patriots. Now, my, Let's the text said, said nothing about the Patriots. I want to be clear here. I want to be clear that A, the text was not from yeah, Odell. Friend. I promise. I give my word. And B, the text did not say any team in particular. I'm connecting the Patriots dot when I was told that the Odell trade rumblings are starting to rumble again. And I do think your Pats need another weapon. See, you drinking a beer? Wilds Wilds just had a beer ready? <laughs> water, but it's eight a.m. He had a beer ready for in case I brought up Odell. So I do I think they could use another weapon so it's not Ryan Izzo going over the middle, fumbling the game away. But I think the Patriots are going to be fine, and I think they could be downright dangerous. Had they added Le'Veon Bell, they didn't. If they were to make a trade for a wide receiver, which maybe they could, Wilds. Okay. So... If you're saying Odell is on the block, 
then that changes that changes the whole NFL world. And obviously we want that. Am I to Jenna to your question, am I worried? I've got a new segment. It's called Super Hot Take. You ready for this? I break it out. Yeah. And, and it's so hot, I actually break it out here. Here's the hot take. You ready for this, Nick? Yeah. Excuses. Underrated. Hottest take of the day. Excuses are underrated. Everybody in the world's been watching too many, too many Instagram motivational videos. You know what? The real world doesn't work like that. We're not Marines, okay? We're not firefighters. It's just you can have excuses in the world. It's all right. It's don't don't believe the the person trying to get you to sell real estate on Instagram. No excuses in your life. There's plenty of excuses. It's okay. The Patriots have three losses. They lost by a yard to the Super Bowl bound Seahawks. The JV Patriots yeah. lost to the Super Bowl bound Chiefs. And Cam Newton, who practiced twice on the field in 16 days, and the rest of the time was on a Zoom call, probably being like all the rest of us, like, am I on mute? What's going on? I can't see you. How do I open up the, uh, the classroom file, the XL, so I can get to the reading portion? Doesn't matter. Excuses are okay. Our defense is tremendous. And Nick, here's the thing. I view the Patriots season a little bit like a college basketball team, where it's like, you know what? We just need to peak, peak at, the, at end. the end. I know we're not peaking. Yeah, peak at, that's yeah right. we just need to peak that's at right. the end. Get to and, and it's not going to be a classic Patriots season where we're rolling. We're just going to, we're down now. Uh-oh, well, Big East tournament. We're getting a little hotter. Next thing we go in the tournament, well, hot. Right. I want to ask Brandon a question. Brandon, because of what Wilds and I are baking in to this analysis is that the Bills are not going to win 11, 12 games, that the Bills are going to go yeah. from 4-0 and to a middling team. I know that, you know, you've been fair about how they've played the last couple weeks, Ooh. but I don't think you're as down on them as we are. Like, what, how many wins do you think I it takes be. to win the AFC East? Oh, you might be. Oh, okay. I, I, I'm not... I, I may be when you see how Josh Allen is regressing. They have a tough schedule ahead mm -hmm. of them. And then the Patriots, yep. they have the, si the seventh easiest remaining schedule in the NFL. Yep. For exactly. that reason, I think that this could easily go back to the Patriots, which is which is so uh, uh, frustrating because the Bills have everything they need. Oh, I don't know enough. what happened to enough. that defensive line. The Chiefs were able to run right through them. Josh Allen regresses. He can't okay, hit a five-yard no check down. This is all bad. This is all bad. But, but before, real quick, Brandon, this, the COVID, before Kobe, go ahead. No, I was just, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but we are late. We're talking no, about the good. team in first in the AFC East and the team in third in the AFC East. But the team in second that I did pick to make the playoffs or not win the division, quarterbacked by your BFF, Ryan Fitzmagic, they're sitting there, okay. just kind of, you know what I mean? They're, they're sitting there just to shut out a team, quietly saying, we, if it's only going to take 10 wins, can we get in that discussion? So I Don't do forget think, about us. I, exactly. I think the AFC East is yeah. going to come down to the end of the year, Jenna, but to Wild's and point, Magic if it's hasn't coming down to weeks, on yet. Right, well, it turned on in either direction. But if it comes down to weeks 15, 16, 17, Jenna, you got to like the Patriots' chances. All right, guys, let's play a little love or hate. So how about this from the Titans-Texans game? Head coach Mike Vrabel from Tennessee intentionally taking a penalty to save 40 seconds. Tennessee ended up scoring the game tying touchdown with four seconds left to send it to overtime. So Vrabel was asked about the play and gave his best non-answer answer. Take a listen. You know, we have to do a better job with penalties. You know, we had seven of them, I think, pretty uncharacteristic. You know, we had a few on offense. So, you know, we'll, we have to be be better in all areas. And I think the penalties are one thing that we focus on, um, you know, communicating, trying to trying to give ourselves the best chance to, to win a football game. All right, Nick. <laughs> Love or hate this move from Mike Vrabel. I want to give him a standing ovation. I love it so much. This is so smart. I, I, we don't have to get in the minutiae of what happened. Essentially, the, if you're trying to save clock, the worst thing your opponent can be in is second and one. Because they're going to get the first down and they're going to be able to run 40 seconds. So he just gave them the first down, saved the 40 seconds. I, Brandon, I think Vrabel, 
understanding this is the second year in a row he has understood a bit of a loophole in the rules to give his team a better chance to win. I think it's brilliant. I'm it shocked works. more coaches don't really? understand it, and I love it from him. Because, I mean, he's stealing a lot from Bill Belichick, rightfully so. Two yeah. things I loved about it. One, he's finding ways to get the edge. They literally sit down and figure out how can they manipulate the entire system. That's one, get to the edge. And two, be extremely elusive in a press conference. We've seen Bill Belichick yeah. do that better than anyone. I love Vrabel. He is a phenomenal head coach. Okay. He's great. I know you're going to say I'm a hypocrite for this. Just tell this guy, stay back. But once a Patriot, always a Patriot. So I like Vrabel, but I also like Romeo Cornell on the other side. The NFL probably needs to take a, a, a look at all of the Vrabel and Belichick-esque rules, no. specifically Vrabel. You can leave Belichick out of it, where the rules can be manipulated to your but, team's advantage. Like, this, obviously, Romeo, like, there should be an option. There, this is not fair. He it's could've, fundamentally Romeo could have declined it. And not no, fair. no, no. No, it's not. It's not. Because Romeo could have declined it. Romeo didn't know what was going on. I love Romeo. Oh, he Romeo didn't know what was, declined he could have declined it. It's not like <laughs> last year. Last year with the punt, he with the clock outside of five minutes. On. Right. No, and, and by the way, I don't blame him for not getting it. Nobody knew in real time. The, the announcers yeah. didn't know, nobody knew.